My name is Cole Geisinger. I'm a web developer for Maker Media, uh, which uh, is the main company behind Make Magazine and Maker Faire. Uh, we push out tons of content daily, all about anything dealing with people making stuff. So that'd be like people doing awesome stuff with 3D printers, uh, robotics, Arduinos, Raspberry Pis, not the actual pie that you eat. Um, all that fun stuff. So we bundle all of that into a quarterly magazine and also push it out onto our WordPress blog uh, where we get tons of traffic on it. Uh, and lastly, uh, Maker Fair, which um, I help take care of the website for that where we bring in makers, the people that do all these awesome things and give them a space to actually come together for two days and show off the cool stuff that they're building all day. So I don't want to bore you too long about my stuff. We're here about Ajax and responsive web design. Uh, so to start off, what is Ajax? Who actually knows what Ajax is? Who uses Ajax? Who's just here for the free pizza? <laughs> yeah, pizza's awesome. Um, so Ajax is actually a four-letter acronym. It stands for Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. Now, don't let the XML part throw you off. You don't necessarily need to actually use XML. Uh, the most common language actually to use instead of XML is JSON, which is uh, something that I prefer to do, and um, we'll touch into that a little bit. Uh, for this presentation, I actually put together a small little plugin that you know just shows Ajax doing what it does best, which is uh, basically synchronizing with your server with, when you make a request, and it will go to the server, process some code for you, and then send it all back without needing to refresh your browser. And uh, you can actually go and download this plugin. I know the, the GIF doesn't really, or GIF, sorry, uh, doesn't really show it. It's GIF. Uh, so here I actually have it installed. Uh, I'm running the latest version of WordPress trunk, which is 3.7, and this is the new 2014 theme that they're putting together. So the idea is I will just put in some awesome text there, and it will normally work. Ouch. See, that's why I hate doing live ones. That's why I took a picture of the animated GIF. So the idea is you'll put the text together, you'll push the button, it runs a request and injects it into the body of the content. Um, so let's dive into that and see how this works. Here's a uh, snippet of the code from the plugin that I have, and I like to use a technique called OOP. I know it's a little more complicated sometimes, but uh, when doing plugins, that's just, I think, a better way to do it. So what we have is we have two functions. One is, uh, runs what's known as WP and Q script. And this is a technique that everyone should be using. You should never be hard coding your JavaScript files into the header of your theme or even your style sheets. So you want to use this function to enqueue your JavaScript files with WordPress. And from there, when you've done that, you, tell, you take that function and you hook it within WordPress. So let's dive in a little bit. The first function is WP and Q script, and it takes five parameters. The first is the handle, which is a unique identifier for that script specifically. So you can use that ID within WordPress to say, hey, I want to load this script here, or I want to load it there, or I want to remove it here, whatever. Uh, the next is the, the source attribute, which is the URL to the script. This is obviously the, the path that you want to put in. And there's two ways to do that. If you're building it for a theme, you would actually use, uh, what I prefer is a get style sheet directory URI that literally goes and gets the full URL path to your theme, wherever it is, and it will go and get that file. The next is, if you're building it for a plugin, you'd use plugins underscore URL. Um, the last three parts really aren't required, but it's generally a good idea to, to know what they're doing. So one of them is depths, which is dependencies. This is a way of saying that this JavaScript file depends on JavaScript, uh, or sorry, not JavaScript, on jQuery. So we can say that this script should only load after jQuery has loaded. So WordPress will do its thing, load jQuery, and then it will load yours when it hits that file. The next line is versions. Uh, and that is literally just stacking a version number onto your script. So it's a, a way of being able to do caching, and you can change that number. It will refresh the cache for, for you, stuff like that. Uh, if you don't fill it in, it just puts in the WordPress uh, current version number. So in my instance, it would be 3.7. And the last is in footer, which is saying I want to load this script in the footer of my theme. By default, it will load it in the head. The last part that you want to do 
is actually tell WordPress that you want to load this script in with your theme. And what we do is we use add action and we hook onto WP and Q scripts. Now you'll find lots of documentation throughout the internet just saying WP print scripts. It's not the proper way to do it because it actually loads it a little bit too late. It will still do it, but the proper way to actually do it is WP in Q scripts. So you're wanting to enqueue it. Um, you don't want to use it because kittens will cry. It's not very fun. The next thing you want to do is use WP localized script. Now this function actually um, was built for doing translations. So like, you know, if you're building a plugin that needs to be translated into another language, you would normally use this, but you could also use it to your advantage to put in arbitrary JavaScript. And that's exactly what we're gonna use it here. And within WordPress, there's this awesome file called admin Ajax, which is an Ajax processor. It will take any Ajax request that you send to WordPress, process it, and then send the data back for you to handle it. So we're gonna use this function here to um, to bring that out onto the front end of our theme so we have something to hook onto within our Ajax. And don't worry, I'll be coming back to some of these to kind of connect the dots a little bit. Um, we're gonna break that script down just a little bit. Uh, to start off, it has a handle, which is just like WP and Q script, but actually this handle, you want it to match what you put into um, your WP and Q script. So, Within WP localized script, you'd actually want to use this exact same handle. So that way it makes a connection between those two scripts. The next attribute is uh, object name. This is essentially a name spacing to contain your arbitrary JavaScript within. Um, I'll show you an example of that in just a minute. Uh, and then last is L10N, which is, or I10N, sorry. It uh, basically means internationalization, but um, you just essentially feed it a, um, an array that, gives, that puts a path to your Ajax script, to the uh, WordPress Ajax script. Now we're actually onto the fun stuff, the Ajax part. It's a little intimidating at first, but the script's actually really basic. What we're doing here is we're essentially creating a click event listener and running our actual Ajax. So our, let me slide back. On our little form here that we have, I have a submit button at the end. Basically I've attached a, an event listener there. So when a user clicks on that subscribe button, or sorry, the submit button, it will then go and run this script. Oh, I'm going too far. Sorry. This script. So it will run this script here once that event actually happens. And you can see this is our event listener. We basically have a class that we're, listen that we're looking for. And when that element is clicked, we then tell the script that, hey, we don't want it to submit the form because that's kind of the opposite of Ajax. Um, and that's doing that with a prevent default. So after that, we actually run our Ajax from, the, from there. And I'm gonna to try to break this down a little bit. Um, to do this, we're, we're gonna use jQuery. Uh, that's just my language of choice. Uh, you can really do Ajax in any kind of JavaScript-based language. Um, and so we're gonna start that off uh, by saying that this is gonna be a post. And you can relate that to the, um, to the action attribute on your form. Uh, you can do post or get. They both have their different reasons for using it. Uh, for this specific uh, script, I'm gonna use post. Uh, from there, I'm gonna say what type of data I'm actually passing through Ajax, which is JSON. Um, and the next is URL. Now, I'm gonna connect the dot here a little bit. What you see here is actually the, um, the script that we put together in WP localized script. Um, yeah. So first off, we have object name. And if we look in this script here, you can see that it's WCSF example, or I'm sorry, WCSF Ajax, and obviously I have WordCamp on the mind when I wrote this. Um, that is our object name. If we come back to the Ajax, you'll, you'll see now that we have WCSF underscore Ajax. That's the object name that we've put together. Within that object exists our Ajax URL, which as you can see at the end, Ajax URL, which creates a 
the URL to our Ajax string. So essentially that's what is happening there. It's making that connection that we're going to go grab our object and then grab the Ajax URL from inside of there. So that way we know where to process this Ajax request. Next is the data field. This is literally the actual objects that, or the, uh, the data that we want to send through the Ajax request to have the server process and then spit back to us. The first option in here is action, which this is required for WordPress to actually process this properly, know where to, know where to send it, process the information, send it back. And in this case, I decided to name it WCSF underscore Ajax. Not the best naming convention, but it works for this example. Uh, the next is the data area, um, or I eh, probably could have named that better. Data is just a random array name that I gave this, or an object name, sorry. Uh, and basically what that does is it goes to the input field, grabs the data that the user inputted in, and then pulls that value out to send to the Ajax. The last two fields is more of a security check. This is a way of saying that, hey, you know, I, I sent this request. I want this, I, uh, I actually want this data to be sent. And the last is the nonce, which everyone should be using nonces anytime you're doing server stuff. That's a WordPress centered um, function that creates a quick little serialized key for you. Um, so with all that data, we're gonna take all of that Send it, to the, send it to the server. When that happens, our complete function will run. And I'm gonna come back to that in just a minute uh, because there's some other steps in front of that that we're gonna, that we're gonna come, that we're gonna read, sorry. So, when our function runs, I'm sorry. So when our function runs, or our, when our Ajax runs, we have our action at the top, just WCSF underscore Ajax. That actually links it over to this function here. And the way how, oh geez, I totally ruined my slides, I'm sorry. Okay, so when action runs, it, it will link up the Ajax with our public function here that, that I've written. And this function will then take our data that we sent with Ajax, process it, and then send back the data and modify the server. Um, so what we do here, we're doing a couple checks for our submission and then also our nonce, which is our security checks to make sure that yes, I want to send this data and yes, it is secure. Uh, so go ahead and actually process that information now. The script's pretty basic, it's doing nothing but grabbing some text and then injecting it back into the page. So all it's really doing is it's grabbing that, that the, uh, the data information that I passed here, this guy. So it's grabbing that and it's sanitizing it using WP Kess's post. It basically strips out a whole bunch of excess, um, any kind of like bad like JavaScript that somebody may be trying to inject into our website or other kind of bad code that we don't want in there. And it will take that data, encode it into JSON, and then send it back to the server. The last little thing that I want to point out on this script is the die function at the end. This is a function that you want to throw at the end of your Ajax request, because otherwise WordPress actually will output a zero at the end of your JSON array. And that usually leads to parsing errors and other issues that, that you don't want. So you want to always attach that at the end of your script. So, once this all that happens, your result should be this. Fill in the text, hit the submit button, Ajax will process your request, and then the server will inject it into the page for you. After that, it's party time. You can relax. And hopefully that information's stuck. <laughs> so. So I'm sure there's probably a lot of questions. Any questions? Anyone? Are we all Ajax experts now? Yes. <laughs> what are some places on the website that you use Ajax? Like what are some exchanges or things that you use? 
you guys use them for? So some areas would be, um, the best one would be Maker Faire, probably. And uh, we have a whole application process that we built where makers can sign up, you know, put in their application for their event that they're putting together. And uh, that application is broken up into multiple pages. So an instance of that would be like when they're ready for the next page, it runs an AJAX request, saves all that information into the database, and then presents the next screen for them. Instead of page refresh. Right. My what? Oh, um, I have a plugin that's available. It's all about Ajax stuff. Um, it's called WP Modal Login. Um, nothing really too sp uh, you know, spectacular. It's, it does what it does. It uses Ajax to log you in. Uh, you can also register accounts, um, reset your password, uh, and there's a bunch of other stuff that I'm baking into it, but it's still um, it's pretty basic as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Any others? No? All right. Well, thanks a lot, guys. <laughs>